Hey guys, David here and welcome to another part of the Dark Art CNC build series. Now we're really making progress here, things are moving along and it's looking more and more like a fully finished machine. Now there are some glaring obvious things missing like the spindle here. Long story but it's uh, back at Spinengy uh, getting some stuff repaired. Uh, but that's not the topic of today. Today's topic is all the other little things that you saw uh, that kind of were skipped in the last video where all of a sudden I had covers here and all of that stuff. So today we're going to talk about these nice covers here that make sure there's no, no dust everywhere and things look nice and cohesive. We're also going to talk about these custom made bellows and how it is actually really cheap and how you can go about doing that and a bunch of other little things all around. And for this video, I want to give a big thank you to PCBWay for sponsoring this video and sending over these covers here everywhere. All of these big, nice uh, sheet metal parts that are, have a black powder coating on them, they were all made by PCBWay. And you might know them primarily for making PCBs, as the name hints, but they have a lot of manufacturing services like 3D printing in all kinds of different materials, CNC machining, as well as sheet metal fabrication. I also want to quickly tell you about their project design contest that they have going on where you cannot just design cool PCB projects but also mechanical projects or SDM32 projects. There are a lot of really cool prizes to win and even just for submitting a project you will win something. So if you are the kind of person that would like to participate in something like that, uh, exchange some cool ideas, make sure to go check out the link down below uh, to find out more. Now backing up a little bit, in the very first video of this series I talked about my design considerations for this build and one of the main critiques that I had for the Stronghold Pro from Roderick, which this machine is loosely based on, is that there's just no thought given to dust management. It's just like all the linear rails are out in the open, all the ball screws are out in the open and that kind of works if you're just building a cheap hobby machine and you really want to maximize the uh, kind of area of machinability uh, to low cost and you don't really care about longevity but once you start using a machine more and get into something more that is kind of prosumer or like a small business machine then having longevity in the parts is really important and also being able to clean up your workspace really quickly is also nice and important and having nice flat panels here is a lot easier to clean up than having to uh, vacuum out all the different tracks of uh, the T-slot extrusion and all of that stuff. Now you might be able to see that this is not fully enclosed here and uh, this is of course a trade-off. Uh, fully enclosing a machine so that all of the mechanical components are covered at all times is quite difficult and comes at quite a bit of travel expense. On the x-axis here there is kind of stuff in the way anyhow uh, so having to go in a little bit further and losing some travel here does not actually impact me because there's like I cannot machine out here anyhow. However, on the y-axis, uh, I can very easily move all the way to the front and be machining here on my vertical uh, surface uh, and I can go all the way to the back. So if I wanted to add bellows here as well, the machine would have to be 10 centimeters long or on either side and my workshop is long out of space already so that really was not an option. So the next specs Thing is just to kind of help with gravity, uh, have this kind of protected overlap. All the chips and dust is going to be mainly created here. It's going to spray out uh, and then land here, land on here, uh, but hopefully not too much on the linear rails here. Now the biggest risk here actually is just my pants rubbing it up against the greasy ball screw and I definitely have some greasy pants from that, but that is definitely manageable. I also added one extra uh, like height uh, here. So this is a four high uh, extrusion here, whereas the Stronghold Pro only uses a three high extrusion since the top one actually is not attached to anything. Like uh, the, the linear rail here is attached to the second one. Uh, but with the height of the blocks here, I need the fourth rail to be able to just have a flat top. Otherwise the blocks stick out a bit more and I would have to make a very complicated shape and that just makes it more expensive, more complicated, uh, which is no good for anyone. So coming back to these uh, covers, 
Uh, and I had, they sent them up in Fusion 360 and uh, first just kind of a solid models uh, to figure out what even I want. Uh, but then I went ahead and also designed uh, sheet metal parts since Fusion 360 supports that and that allows you to more easily uh, defend like uh, design the radius and uh, do flanges really easily and have it obey all the rules. But the really cool thing about PCB way is that you don't actually have to kind of submit a DXF file and then uh, tell them bend here, bend here, bend here. You can just submit a 3D file and if it's designed for sheet metal manufacturing uh, then they can automatically uh, create their flat panel. They know exactly where to bend to what angle and how sharp of a bend you would like. So that makes it so much easier for you. You don't have to fuss about with that and just submit it. So I was really happy to see that as a, with a lot of other uh, sheet metal uh, suppliers, uh, you will just submit flat drawings and then hope that they interpret your uh, bending lines correctly. So the material I chose here is two millimeter thick aluminum and uh, actually, I'm really happy with that material choice. Uh, uh, I was at first a bit worried that it's too thin, but it's perfectly strong enough. And I could have gone with steel, but aluminum is cheaper and it's lighter. And these things are huge, uh, so I figured aluminum is probably a better idea. And then I went ahead and had them powder coated in black, which definitely is worth the money. It's not that expensive and the powder coating is really high quality. It's very durable. I've not really specially paid attention here while building on it and just basically no scratches. There's a couple of fingerprints on it, uh, but that's it. And uh, I was also really happy just generally how easily everything fit together. I designed everything in the computer, put tolerances where I thought I needed them, uh, but when I kind of took them, just put them on here and they fit perfectly, I was very happy and very relieved because these parts, uh, since they are so huge, were not that cheap. And main driver of that uh, fairly high cost is the shipping. Now, I'm sure if I had them made locally and powder coated, they would be way more expensive, but uh, shipping definitely is a consideration for having parts this big. They also came in a huge wooden crate that I had to uh, somehow uncrate without a proper crowbar. That was a fun experience, uh, but that also meant that they all came in one piece with no things, no scratches and uh, no bends out of place. I also made a similar cover here for the back and you already saw in a previous part I installed uh, this little uh, just trough up here that uh, captures the drag chain and that should just make sure that everything is uh, held in place here nicely. I could have really used one for the y-axis as well. I thought my table was wide enough, but it was not quite. But uh, I managed in other ways. So that concludes uh, these covers. And overall, not just because this is sponsored, but this is like such a great investment. Uh, even if I had to pay for it myself, uh, maybe I would have tried to DIY it. Uh, but having these high quality uh, covers here and just kind of pulls the entire machine together and makes it look like it's a professional machine instead of just something kind of cobbled together. And uh, that definitely also counts for something in my book. And then in that same vein of professional machine, uh, these bellows here, I'm also over the moon. Uh, I have seen a long time ago on AliExpress uh, advertisements for uh, that you can get uh, bellows, not just in nominal sizes, but custom made I uh, kind of put that to the back of my mind, expecting it to be quite expensive. As, well, you never know if the price that is quoted for something custom is the price they're actually going to charge you for your customization or if that's just kind of a starting out price. But these two bellows, uh, so it's a pair, fully custom shape, uh, were 50 bucks shit. That's it. Now, I got a couple of quotes from different jobs and they were kind of all over the place. Uh, this was one of the cheaper quotes. I had another one that was around 100 bucks and I was tempted to go with the more expensive one hoping that it would be higher quality uh, but the communication there was a bit uh, more difficult and here the communication was very easy. I just sent them a kind of a sketch of the profile that I wanted to fit around uh, kind of and how, you, how, like, how tall these should be, what kind of compression ratio I want so these are uh, 20 millimeter uh, tall uh, accordion bellows and that uh, allows me to have a compression ratio of 10 to 1 meaning that uh, fully extended this is roughly 70 uh, centimeters and then compresses down to 7. This is really good, that means that I basically don't lose any travel here on the x-axis. 
then the like end plates here uh, are uh, like a thicker material and then in between each one of them uh, has like a very thin uh, cutout shape and that uh, goes around the linear rail and make sure that like I cannot pull forward on this anywhere. It's nicely captured in here. Now I did let them know that my drawings, um, the dimensions on there were just like the actual object and that they should please add nice t tolerances around so that it doesn't bind up. And they understood the assignments perfectly. It's clearly that they're doing this not for the first time because they fit on easily. Well, fit on not that easily because I had already assembled it. It would have been easier to just slide them on from the side. But with a bit of brute force, they went on easily. And now they just slide perfectly. They have very minimal play. It's a bit of back and forth play, but nothing uh, that is bothersome in any way. Uh, they are very smooth as well. Now we did not include any sort of attachment points. Uh, I didn't really know how I wanted to attach it and this material is very soft so it's easy enough to just drill those myself. So I uh, drilled uh, three holes here and then uh, tapped some matching holes into the end plate. So I'm just using a couple M4 uh, bolts and made sure that they have a nice flat head as uh, so that way uh, they don't take up too much space. And then with this, uh, here in terms of Losing, I already mentioned I'm losing basically no uh, space in the x and y direction. I am, however, losing a little bit of height here. That is just the other way how I can I have it go all the way around. Now, I knew that because I was designing uh, the machine with these pedals in mind. That's why uh, the gantry side plates are higher to match the height of the, these pedals. And as well, here it matches up on the bottom. So I designed it in with that in mind. Uh, so it doesn't look like the space is wasted but I could have higher gantry clearance without these bellows installed for kind of the same height uh, on the side. So you're giving up a little bit, but uh, what you are gaining is that the ball screw, the linear rails in here are completely protected from all the dust and uh, nothing is going to uh, get in here and it also just looks a lot more professional. Now you might see that the z-axis here is still very exposed and that is just because there's so much going on here that I did not have the brain capacity to figure that out in CAD and trust that it would actually work. Uh, I already started here with the uh, dust chew mount. I can actually show you uh, the motorized dust chew I'm installing. So yeah, uh, this is a motor here and that moves up and down uh, uh, this here where, which will have the kind of dust chew attached to it so it can uh, retract up to do the tool changes and then go down and uh, I can set it to which height I want it and uh, then uh, I can do all my machining. So between that and the kind of more complicated uh, shape of everything here it was really hard to kind of fit something in but I might add some bellows here at the top. I have enough travel here and this travel is kind of almost free as it doesn't cost you any rigidity. It does cost you more material but when designing for travel, it's not really the material cost that is the true cost, but kind of the rigidity you lose by uh, making it bigger to fit the same area. Um, so I might add some uh, bellows in here and add some plates to the sides, but I'm not going to be able to fully enclose the z-axis. Uh, you would just need a lot more complicated design to be able to pull that off. And I think with that, it's uh, time to call this video uh, here. Uh, in the next video, hopefully, I will uh, have the spindle back and we will uh, install the spindle, talk about the uh, spindle, show you how it automatically uh, changes the tools here and maybe even do some machining. And then there's going to be one on the master controller as well. And after that, I will have kind of a big uh, final video where I show some machining, I talk about all the different aspects. And there I can also uh, answer some of your questions. So if you have any questions about either this particular part or just in general the machine, leave them down below. I already got some questions about uh, cost and I will definitely uh, include a cost breakdown in that final video as well. And so with that, thank you guys for watching. Big thank you to PCBWay for sponsoring this video and supplying with these uh, beautiful parts here. Like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff and see you next time.